My name is R. Crosby Lyles, and this is News from the Can. I'm not an alarmist, I promise you. Um, if you're at all a disturbed person or you have any propensities to um, depression or anxiety, um, well, I'm not going to say that. I would say we don't know. Don't jump to conclusions. We don't really know. Uh, wait, let this play out. I started making this video earlier today, and I had a meandering beginning here because I started talking about, well, is this, you know, I'm looking at weather patterns. Is this something we, that we would consider the termination phase where we start, where we start falling rapidly into uh, a glacial period again? That was the subject of the video that I was starting to make, and I mentioned also that my mom is... You know, uh, one of the reasons that I haven't made a video in a while is because my mom got COVID in September and now she's in a nursing home, blah, blah, blah. Um, and so I waited until the end to check Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Service, and I wasn't aware of what I was going to find. And um, I had to think about it. And I'm like, what, what, do I, what really needs to be said here? And basically the bottom line is somebody needs to call the president. Because somebody's going to have to get on television, on primetime television, and talk about this to the people of the United States of America, and maybe the world, really, the world, and explain why this is either a problem or not a problem. Do we need to worry about it, and what should we expect? I did this whole freaking video. I went to, you know, I looked at... This is uh, Climate Reanalyzer, you know, and it's, you know, this is what, it looks kind of sort of nominal for nowadays, I guess, you know, I, so anyway, but there's methane, and I'm going to talk about that in a second. So here's Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Service, C-O-P-E-R-N-I-C-U-S, Atmosphere, not atmospheric, but atmosphere monitoring service. It's a product of the European Space Agency, air quality blog. What I do is I go to data and I click that. And then here you're going to look for reactive gases, which is what this is. CAMS Copernicus is what you'll hear it referred to, which is Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Service. And then, so it has family of products, aerosols, greenhouse gases, reactive gases, solar radiation. Well, I usually go to the reactive gases so that I can look around at other stuff, carbon monoxide. So I looked at this, and this looks kind of nominal. This is total, what's called total column. So I opened it up, and I looked, and I hadn't even seen methane yet. This is total column of methane. This is carbon dioxide. So this is the surface level of carbon dioxide. The surface level of carbon dioxide waxes and wanes. Actually, this doesn't. The surface level doesn't look that bad. It's like 400 to 425 parts per million. Anyway, it waxes and wanes because this is from plant respiration and photosynthesis. That's what you're seeing. These are these are areas where there is a lot of plant life. Looks kind of nominal. All right, 50 hectopascals. This is actually the first thing I looked at, and I went, holy shit, 600 parts per million at 50 hectopascals. This is it in the stratosphere. It's about between, it's around 67,000, between 60 and 67,000 feet in elevation. So it's in the stratosphere. Uh, greenhouse gas in the stratosphere causes global cooling. You need to know that. That's that. 300 pectopascals, which is about 30 some odd, about 30,000 feet, right around in there. 600 parts per million. Again, pole to pole, wall to wall. Nothing to see here, right? 500 hectopascals, that's about 15 to 18,000 feet, depending on where you, you know, whether, how close you are to the equator. The atmosphere is a little thicker at the equator. 600 parts per million, pole to pole, wall to wall. You don't start getting a break until you get to 850 hectopascals, which is about 1,200 feet. 
and elevation. And there it's, you're starting at 420 parts per million. And this is where you see like smoke from industry and fires and stuff. And so I saw that and I'm like, holy shit. And I didn't even look at the methane yet. This is total column of methane. You know, 1,900 parts per million, total column. Holy shit. Uh, nobody's talking about it. I mean, maybe they figure that it's it's hard to... I got to tell you, a lot of people that I know, they, they don't really understand what I'm talking about. What's, what's a hectopascal? What is that? That's a pressure level. So it doesn't really... It doesn't really make sense to talk about the atmosphere in terms of altitude because the atmosphere is, is in layers. It makes more sense to talk about it in pressure levels because that's where the layers are. Total column is all the layers. You're looking at all the layers all the way down, and they add it out, uh, up. And So 50 hectopascals of that, I haven't even really looked at this yet. That's in the stratosphere, 67 some odd thousand feet. Actually, it doesn't look that bad probably because it's all been converted to carbon dioxide and water vapor. You know, and uh, ozone takes a hit too from all of that because methane goes right for the stratosphere. Okay, 300 hectopascals, again, it's about 30,000 feet, something like that. So, yeah, you can definitely see that this is methane working its way up to the stratosphere and reacting with oxygen and, and turning into water vapor and carbon dioxide not so much in the in the lower reaches you know in the down in the Antarctic area a lot more in the northern hemisphere which is where all the oil and gas exploration is all the oil and gas infrastructure and exploration 500 hectopascals 18,000 feet roughly 15 to 18,000 feet oh my god so, um, you know, without really, and it's just, it's off the scale. The scale goes to, to 2,360 parts per million. And this is at the top of the scale. They're going to have to either come up with a new scale or something, right? That's at the top of the scale. So look, if it's bullshit or if it needs to be uh, explained or it needs some sort of nuance, then somebody of well, with uh, some scientific girth uh, and authority needs to come out and say, yeah, well, yeah, it's, um, it's a shit sandwich, but it uh, might not be that bad. Uh, we don't really know. I mean, you know, honestly, we don't really know. I, I certainly don't know. You don't know. We don't know. Nobody's really come out on, on uh, television. You know, I'm talking about coming out on, you know, for that news hour, primetime news, 8 p.m., 7 p.m., whenever the hell they do it, and said, okay, guys, here this is. This is the, this is the uh, European Space Agency, Copernicus Atmospheric Monitoring Service. This is what you see, but here's why we think this is either correct not correct uh, 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 important not important why we are worried about it or not worried about it because it didn't it did it hasn't looked like this the whole fucking time okay it just you know this is new I've been doing this uh, every time I I've been like what the fuck is it gotta be 850 hectopascals, about 1,200 feet roughly. Okay, well, there it is. You can see where it's coming from. Yeah, Pennsylvania, New York, maybe some offshore stuff, I think, maybe up there, all along the Midwest, down into Texas, all the way up here. You don't really see much coming off of, of Alaska. Got some stuff going on over here in eastern Africa and down there between Argentina and um, Brazil. Yeah, that looks about right. Uh, Colombia, Ecuador, and Russia, and China. Well, let's look at the surface level, and I think this is going to be your... I think we're looking at our culprit here. Wow, look at all that, that methane coming off of India. I guess that makes sense. They have a lot of cows. 
this is the surface level. So, bottom line, it hasn't gotten any better. So that's the person that needs to, somebody needs to have a word, or the president, you know, just right from the president, because why would the European Space Agency lie about a thing like that? This is my video from October 7th, 2019, where I was, stratospheric CO2 level jump ends debate, mechanics of global warming explained. That's what it looked like then. This is 50 hectopascals. 50 hectopascals. Stratosphere of 67,000 feet. And it's this ribbon. Before that, the reason I made this video before that, it was a ribbon that basically took up this, you know, the um, five degrees or whatever it is, you know, the, this, yeah, uh, five, ten, five or ten degrees right here in the middle by the, equator it was a ribbon a little ribbon of carbon dioxide I'm like damn look at that you know what I mean so uh, and that's your methane at 50 hectopascals and 850 hectopascals it looked like that not a, not a lot in the southern hemisphere, but it's not totally devoid either of methane, which is fascinating. What is this? Methane at the surface level. So it's still pretty ugly. Yeah, it's still pretty ugly. Not as much from the United States. Apparently, of course, it does wax and wane. I'm not really letting it play there. I wish I had. Um... Total column methane. That's total column methane. This is in, um, and again, this is October 7th, 2019. But the whole reason I made the video, this is from February. So this video was made in October 7th, 2019. This video was made February 2019. And that's what it looked like. So that change, this change happened in less than a year and eight months. And that's why I made this video. I went, damn. It went from that to this. That says a thousand parts per million. And they bobbled back and forth. And people argued about the shit online. And oh, well, a thousand parts at, at, in the stratosphere. It's a barely a breath full of blah and blah, blah, blah. And I'm like, well, it's an amount. A thousand parts per million. It's colored red. If it's not. A problematic then why is it colored red and maybe they should choose a different color scheme so again if this is bullshit or not a problem or nothing to worry about then somebody needs to explain that uh, and take some kind of issue with the European Space Agency you know the Copernicus uh, atmospheric monitoring service maybe they should be taken to task but guess what we've been having this conversation for at least four years now this has come up I've talked about this if this is a problem we need to know about it if it's not a problem we need to know about it for a long time and, and it's gone round and round it hasn't improved it hasn't gotten any better and so I guess everybody's sanguine about this and if they are, then we need to know about that. And maybe somebody out there needs to be, needs to put a little phone call in to Joe Biden, President of the United States, and say, "Hey, bud, we got a little something going on here that that you might want to weigh in on, or at least have a look at. Does he know about it? Does he give a shit? Are people hiding this data? You know, if this is being if this is being hidden for some reason, or if everybody knows about it." You know what I mean? Uh, but a lot of lay people, they don't understand what the hell. It's like, what are you talking about? They don't get it. They're like, I don't know. What, what do you? What do you? What's what's the deal? And I, I wouldn't freak out. I mean, I, that you know that you're, what we're stuck in here is we're stuck in that thing where we want everybody to remain calm. So yeah, remain calm and call the fucking president and show this to him so we can see what he thinks about it.
or we can see what the science advisor has to say about it. Have they seen this data? I mean, some people really have, you know, some learned folk out there, um, some people with PhDs really have their heads stuffed way up their assholes. I hate to say it, but it's really true. And they don't really look, oh, well, that's on the web. I don't know. I don't know. I might have to look at it maybe later. I'm sorry. You know. Richard Lenzen seems like a pretty reasonable chap. He says, oh, I don't really see what, you know, a little bit of CO2, how that's going to ever affect anything. I'm like, well, Dr. Lenzen, what about this? I mean, I guess I could wait and call Dr. Lenzen and see what's up or any of that kind of shit, you know. That, that's a possibility. Can have a little conversation with them, but who the fuck am I? You know what I mean? You know how that's going to go. I'm going to call them up. Eh, I'm going to get shuffled from here to there, and eh, not really a big deal. No problem. This is 50 hectopascals, 300 hectopascals, 500 hectopascals, 600 parts per million. Wall to fucking wall. I don't think you should panic, but I think we need to have a conversation about it. Somebody needs to call the president. No, no, no bullshit. Somebody needs to call the president, somebody with half a fucking brain in their head, and ask him. Having said all that, because I went to Alaska in September, and Alaska, as far as I can tell, is still there. Got a little fish farm going there. Whales are feeding. Looks kind of phenomenal. Pardon my French. Went, had a good time. I think that's Ketchikan. If I'm not mistaken, I believe that's catching me. That might be. Alaska's still there. We're still here. So, uh, anyway, it was a good trip, good time, and somebody call the president. We're going to have to hear from somebody. They, and they should tell you. I don't think we should panic. Don't panic. They've been talking about that. You know, oh, panic, panic. Well, shit, just show them this. But they don't. They don't because, you know, the weather's actually turning cold a little bit. So if it's a termination event. If this is a termination event, then it might be, this might be a prelude to uh, the rapid onset glacial period, which is what that, the, the, that video was about. Anyway, that's it. My name is R. Crosby Lyles. Thanks for watching. See you.